Hello children, in this video lecture, I will explain you chapter of Vistas, chapter 4, The Enemy, written by Pearl S. Buck. Pearl Buck was an American writer and novelist. She had a Chinese name, Sai Senchu, as she spent her childhood in China, being the daughter of missionaries. She was awarded the Pulitzer Prize in 1932 and the Nobel Prize in Literature in the year 1938. The enemy is set at the time of the Second World War. It is a heart-rendering portrayal of the conflict between man's head and heart. An American sailor is washed ashore in a dying state at the doorstep of a very eminent Japanese surgeon and scientist, Dr. Sadao Hoki. Sadao is torn between his duty as a doctor and as a Japanese. His art is telling him to save the prisoner while his mind is fighting to turn him over to the police. It is difficult choice to decide whether one should allow oneself to be governed by emotion or by the reason. Let's see this in the story. Now, let's know about the characters. Dr. Sadao, he is an accomplished surgeon who revolves successfully the conflict between his patriotic duty and his duty to save the life of the people. Second character, Hana, Sadao's wife, who helps her husband in operating on the American despite her physical discomfort. Tom, the American. He is a typical American soldier thinking that most Japanese are cruel and not human. The general, he is a selfish old man only wanting Sadao to make him recover from his illness. Children, these explanations I have divided into parts. So, let's start an explanation of the chapter of part 1. Before you read, it is the time of the world war. An American prisoner of war is washed ashore in a dying state and is found at the doorstep of a Japanese doctor. Should he save him as a doctor or hand him over to the army as a patriot? Let's see in this story, in this wonderful story of the enemy. Dr. Sadao Hawkes' house was built on a spot of the Japanese coast where, as a little boy, he had often played. The low square stone house was set up rocks upon rocks well above a narrow beach that was outlined with bent pines. As a boy, Sadao had climbed the pines, supporting himself on his bare feet, as he had seen men do in the South Seas when they climb for coconuts. His father had taken him often to the islands of those seas and never had. He failed to say to the little brave boy at his side, those islands yonder and they are the stepping stones to the future for Japan. Where shall we step from them? Sadao had asked seriously. Who knows? His father had answered, Who can limit our future? It depends on what we make it. The house of Dr. Sadao Hoki was constructed on the beach in Japan. When he was a child, he used to often play on the beach. There some beaches are very wide while others are not. Almost every beach has rocks. The house was of low height and square in shape. It was constructed on rocks of the beach. The beach had many pine trees. The beach was narrow. Here South Seas is referred to Pacific Ocean. When Sadao was a boy, he used to climb pine trees. He used to climb without wearing anything in his feet. In the islands of South Seas, he had seen men climbing coconut trees. He had learned the trick of climbing by watching this man. His father used to often take Sadao to this island. 
He always used to say to the brave boys aloud that those islands situated there are beginning of successful future for Japan. Sadao asked his father whether they would go from there. His father told him that nobody knows about future. Future does not have any limit. His father further said that the person used to make his own future and his future depends upon his efforts. Sadao had taken this into his mind as he did everything. His father said, his father who never joked or played with him, but who spent infinite pains upon him, who was his only son. Sadao knew that his education was his father's chief concern. For this reason, he had been sent at 22 to America to learn all that could be learned of surgery and medicine. He had come back at 30 and before his father died, he had seen Sadao become famous and not only a surgeon but as a scientist because he was perfecting a discovery which would render wounds entirely clean. He had not been sent abroad with the troops. Also, he knew there was some slight danger that old general might need an operation for a condition for which he was now being treated medically. And for this possibility, Sadao was being kept in Japan. Sadao had understood and remembered it. He always remembered and did want. His father had said. His father never played with him or cracked jokes. But he spent a lot of time with Sadao. His father had only one kid, Sadao. His father had a major concern about education of Sadao. So he had spent Sadao to America. He sent Ada Sadao to America to do thoroughly study surgery and medicine. Sadao had gone to America at the age of 22. Sadao came back to Japan at the age of 30. Sadao became famous as a surgeon and a scientist. This had happened while his father was alive. Sadao was trying to complete his research on a method that will make any wound clean. Because of that reason, during World War II, Sadao was not sent to other countries with soldiers. Sadao also knew that the old general of Japan, general means general here the chief of army, he might need to be operated anytime. Though it was a minor possibility, Sadao was kept in Japan for such possibility. At that time, the general was given medicines for his treatment. Clouds were rising from the ocean now. The unexpected warmth of the past few days had at night drawn heavy fog from the cold waves. Sadao watched Miss Hyde outline of a little island near the shore and then come creeping up the beach below the house, wrathing around pines. In a few minutes, fog would be wrapped about the house too. Then he would go into the room where Hana, his wife, would be waiting for him with the two children. At that time, clouds were rising from the sea. From past some days, the air was warm during night time, which was not expected. Because of that, there was dense fog from cold waves of sea. It means that the fog was in the sea. Because of mist, Sadao could not clearly see edges the shore of the small island. That island was near the shore. The mist would slowly come up. To the beach and below his house. It would 
encircle all the pine trees at the beach. In few moments, the fog would cover his house also. The Sadao thought that he would go to his room where his wife Hana and his two kids would be waiting for him. But at this moment, the door opened and she looked out. A dark blue woolen heroine over her kimono, she came to him affectionately and put her arm through his as he stood, smiled and said nothing. He had met Hana in America, but he had waited to fall in love with her until he was sure she was Japanese. His father would never have received her use unless... She had been pure in her race. He wondered often whom he would have married if he had not met Hana, and by what luck he had found her in the most casual way, by chance literary, at an American professor's house. The professor and his wife had been kind people anxious to do something for their few foreign students. And the students though Bord had accepted this kindness. Sadao had often told Hana how nearly he had not gone to Professor Harley's house that night. The rooms were so small, the food so bad, the professor's wife so voluble. But he had gone and there he had found Hana, a new student, and had felt he would love her if it were at all possible. At that time when door of his house was opened when the Sadao entered the house, his wife came out. She was wearing a blue-colored haroi over kimono. She came near to Sadao. She held his arm, smiled but did not say anything. Sadao met Hana in America. They did not fall in love immediately. Sadao wanted to be sure that she was from Japan. His father would have accepted Hana if she is a Japanese. So here pure in the race the words are given and it means that the parents and ancestors of Hana were from Japan. Many times Sadao thought he would not have married anybody other than Hana. Luckily, he had met Hana at the house of his American professor. It was purely a matter of chance and coincidence. The professor and his wife were kind people. They were always eager to help students from foreign countries. The students did not like their nature but had to accept their help. Many times, Sadao had told Hana that he did not want to go to the house of professor that night. Name of the professor was Harley. Rooms in their house were very small. Food they served was not tasty and wife of professor used to talk a lot. But Sadao had gone to the house of professor that night. He met Hana there and Hana was a new student. He liked Hana and he wanted to fall in love with her. Now he felt her hand on his arm and was aware of the pleasure it gave him. Even though they had been married years enough to have the two children, what they had not married had Leslie in America. They had finished their work at school and had come home to Japan. And when his father had seen her, 
the marriage had been arranged in the old Japanese way, although Sadao and Hana had talked everything over beforehand. They were perfectly happy. She laid her cheek against his arm. When Sadao came home, at that time Hana put her hand around the arm of Sadao. Sadao was very happy to feel her arm around his arm. Although they were married many years ago and had two children, they liked each other because they did not marry in America without thinking. They completed their study and came back to Japan. His father met Hana and their marriage was arranged in traditional Japanese way. Sadao had and Hana had talked everything about their marriage before coming to Japan and they were leading a happy life. Hana put her cheek on his arm. It was at this moment that both of them saw something black come out of the mist. It was a man. He was flung up out of the ocean, flung, it seemed, to his feet by a breaker. He staggered a few steps, his body outlined against his mist, his arms above his head, and then he curled mists, hid him again. At that moment, they saw a black object coming out of a fog. It was a man. It was appeared that he was thrown out of the ocean by a wave, breaking at the shore. He was standing on his feet and he walked unsteadily a few steps. Due to mist, they could only see outline of his body. His arms were above his head. Then he was hidden behind a moving mist. Who's that? Hana cried. She dropped Sadao's arm and they both leaned over the railing of the veranda. Now they saw him again, the man who was on his hands, knees crawling, and then they saw him fall on his face and lie there. Hana asked in loud voice, Who was that? They both bent over railing of veranda. Now they saw him again. They saw that man who was walking on his knees and hands. The man fell down and was lying on the beach. A fisherman, perhaps, Sadao said, washed from his boat. He ran quickly down the steps and behind him Hana came. Her white sleeves lying a mile or two away. On either side there were fishing villages. But here was only the bare and lonely co coast. Dangerous with rocks, the surf beyond the beach was spiked with rocks. Somehow, the man had managed to come through them. He must be badly torn. The door made a guess that he was a fisherman. Probably, he was not thrown out of his boat. Sadao ran down the steps. Hana also came behind him. Two miles away, on the either side of their house, were villages of fishermen. But around his house, there were no other houses. It was the only house. The sea near their house had a lot of sharp rocks. Still, the man managed to come through those rocks. He must be severely wounded. They saw when they came towards him that indeed it was so. The sand on one side of him had already a stain of red soaking through. When they went near the man they saw that he was really badly wounded. On one side of him there was a red mark in the sand and the blood was coming from his body and sand had soaked it. He is wounded, Sadao exclaimed. He made haste to the man who lay motionless. His face 
in the sand. An old cap stuck on his head, soaked with sea water. He was in wet ridges of garments. Sadao stopped. Hana at his side and turned the man's head. They saw the face. They both saw the face. A white man. Hana whispered. Sadao said in a surprising manner that the man was injured. He hurriedly went to the person who was not moving. His face was buried in the sand. A cap one was on his head. The cap and his head were wet because of sea water. His clothes were torn and Sadao stopped near the man. Hana also stopped near Sadao. Sadao turned the face of the man up. Hana said in a low voice that he was a white man. Here white man means a person from America, Canada, Australia, Europe and many more countries. Where color of skin of people from these countries is white. Yes, it was a white man. The wet cap fell away and there was his wet yellow hair, long as though for many weeks it had not been cut and upon his young and tortured face was a rough yellow belt. He was unconscious and knew nothing that they did for him. He was a white man. They had removed the wet cap from his head. They could see the, his yellow hair. These hair were long because they had not been cut since many weeks. His face looked young and it was injured. He had a yellow beard. The beard was rough, not trimmed. The man was unconscious, so did not feel anything. Now Sadao remembered the wound. And with his expert fingers, he began to search for it. Blood flowed freshly at his touch. On the right side of his lower back, Sadao saw that a gun wound had been reopened. The flesh was blackened with powder. Sometime, not many days ago, the man had been shot and had not been tended. It was bad chance that the rock had struck the wound. Sadao thought about the wound. He started searching for the wound using his fingers, expert fingers here. The words are written by the author. It means that Sadao was a trained surgeon. When he touched the wound, fresh blood started flowing. Sadao saw a wound at the lower back of the man. It was from a bullet and the wound had opened again. His tissues had become black and some powder was deposited on the wound. The man had suffered wound from a bullet some days ago. The wound was not treated. He was not taken care of. Unfortunately, a rock had hit the wound again. Oh, how he is bleeding, Hana whispered again in a solemn voice. The mist screened them now completely and at this time of day, no one came by. The fisherman had gone home and even the chance beachcombers would have considered the day at the end. Anna said in her soft, pious and sincere voice that the man was bleeding. The mist was all around them at that time. And that time of day, nobody used to come to that side. All fishermen had gone to their homes. Occasional walkers on the beach had also gone home. What shall we do with this man? said our muttered. But his trained hands seemed of their own will be doing what they could do, stench the fearful bleeding. 
he packed the wound with the sea moss that strewed the beach and the man moaned with pain in his stupor but he did not awaken the best thing that we could do would be to put him back in the sea so dow said answering him said now that the bleeding was stopped for the moment and he stopped st- stood up and dusted the sand from his hands sanao told in unclear voice what would they do with the man but his trained hands were not affected by his thoughts they were trying to stop flow of blood from his body sanao put sea grass on the wound this grass was scattered on the beach even in his unconsciousness the man groaned with pain but he did not wake up sadao told to himself that they should throw that person again into the sea he thought that it would be best action at that time reading from the wound had stopped sadao got up and he removed sand from his hands yes undoubtedly that would be best hana said steadily but she continued to stare down at the motionless man if we sheltered a white man in our house we should be arrested and if we turned him over a prisoner he would certainly die so dao said hana said firmly that they would certainly be the best thing to do but she was continuously looking at the man and the man was not moving at all so dog said that if they tried to hide and protect the white man they would be arrested and if they handed the man to police as a prisoner he would surely die the kindest thing would be to put him back into the sea hana said but neither of them moved they were staring with a curious repulsion upon inert finger what is he hana whispered there is something about him that looks american sadao said he took up the battered cap yes they're almost gone was the faint lettering a sailor he said from an american warship spelled it out us navy the man was a prisoner of war hana said that they should put him back into the sea it would be most suitable action to take but sada and hana stood at that place as they were looking at the man who could not move and they were filled with a strange hate towards the man Hana asked, "Who was he?" Said our reply that man appears to be an American. He picked up the damaged cap of the man. Some letters were written on his cap. These letters had become very dim. He read the words "U.S. Navy." In the man was a sailor from a warship of America. He was prisoner of war. children those person who serve in us navy are called sailors and prisoner of war means here a sailor arrested by opposite country during a war as he escaped hana cried softly and uh, that is why he is wounded in the back sadao agreed they hesitated looking at each other then hana said with A resolution come are we able to put him back into the sea if i am able are you sadao asked no hana said but if you can do it alone hana said that the man had escaped from the prison that is why he was wounded sadao 
added that the man was wounded at his back and they looked at each other. Then Anna asked in a decisive voice if they could put him back into the sea. Sadao told Hana if he could put him back into the sea and confirmed that if she could also do it. Then Hana replied in negative way that she said she should do it alone. Sadao hesitated again. The strange thing is, he said, that if the man were whole, I could turn him over to the police without difficulty. I care nothing for him. He is my enemy. All Americans are my enemy. And he is only a common fellow. You see how foolish his face is. But since he is wounded. You also cannot throw him back to the sea. Hannah said. Then there is only one thing to do. We must carry him into the house. But the servants Sadao inquired. Sadao hesitated. He said that he had strange feelings. If the man was not injured, he could have handed him over to the police without any difficulty. Sadao continued that he did not care for the man. The man was his enemy. Sadao said that all Americans were his enemy and the man was just a common person. But he was wounded, so they could not throw him back into the sea. Hana said, and she further said that in that case, they would have to take him to their home. Sadao asked Hana, what would their servants think about it? We must simply tell them that what we intend to give him to police. As indeed we must sit down. We must think of the children and your position. It would endanger all of us if we did not give this man over a prisoner of war. Certainly, said I agreed. I would not think of doing anything else. Hana said that they had to tell servants that uh, he would be given to the police and they had actually do that. They have to think of their children too. Even Hana told Sadao that he had to think of his position also. If they did not hand him over as prisoner war, they would be in danger. Sadao agreed with Hana and he said that he would not think of doing anything else. Children, here is the end of part 1. We will see further story in the part 2. And we will see what Sadao is exactly doing with the man. Thank you.